Today I would like to read a passage that is found in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. The Word of God says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. It's amazing, you know, when you read the Word of God, it teaches you how you can be prosperous and how you can be successful in your life. In the world today, there are many people that do want to be prosperous, that do want to be successful, they want to be happy. And they search and seek for that happiness in many different ways. Sometimes they think, you know, if I have a lot of money, I'll really be happy. Sometimes they think if I have the right spouse, I'll really be happy. Sometimes they think, you know, if I succeed in this area or in that area, and then they get that success, and they didn't satisfy as much or a little bit, then they want another area. And it seems a lot of people are really searching for happiness. Real happiness and success eludes many people. And uh, what is interesting here in this passage is that God has a formula for happiness. God has a formula for success. What is it? It says here, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What does that mean? Well, it means that if it is to be upon our mouth, we are to speak the Word of God. We are to spend time in the presence of God, reading and meditating upon His truth, so that it will sink into our hearts. As Jesus said, the mouth speaks out of the fullness of the heart, and then it will speak the Word of God. So when we think about our own future, for example, we will speak what God says in His Word. When we think about our spouse, our wives, or our husbands, or our children, or our parents, we're going to speak what God says in His Word. So if we communicate to them something that is not in relationships or in, in agreement with the Word of God, then we're going to change what we're going to say to them. We are to speak what the Word of God says. And that's always a blessing. So we're going to speak a blessing to our spouse. We're going to speak a blessing to our children, to our parents. We're going to bless other people. Actually, in uh, uh, Proverbs 18.21, it says that in the power of the tongue is the power of life and death. So it's so important that we take the Word of God, that we have it upon our lips and on our mouth, and speak the Word of God. And this is a present tense, meaning continuously speaking the Word of God. Not just at one moment, but continuously speaking the Word of God. Well, as soon as we wake up, we should speak for the day, what God says. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. In other words, we should see the blessing of God coming our way as a result of what God says. And then when we are in the home, we will say, Blessed am I in the home. Blessed am I in the field when I go out. Blessed am I when I wake up. And blessed am I when I lay down. We are going to speak what God says in His Word about our own situation, about our own spouse. We are going to bless them our children, and whoever we meet. God says that that is a way to happiness. That is a way to success. Actually, this is the way to success. This is the way to, uh, to happiness in our lives, that we speak the Word of God and line up whatever we say with what God says in His Word. Now, when we go further on, we see the second point here. It says that we should meditate on it day and night. So it shouldn't be a period in our lives when we say, you know, today's Sunday, we're going to church, it's the Lord's day, so let's do what God says. Let's go to the house of God, let's listen to the Word of God, and let's behave well. We're going in the presence of God today. No, no, no. It says that we should meditate on it day and night. There should be no distinction between the weekdays and the Sunday. Every single day, Monday should belong to the Lord, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all of those days. When we go at home, when we go at work, when we go in school, wherever we go, we should meditate upon the Word of God. Uh, the original actually means we should 
mutter under our noses, you know, like we should be talking. What does God say here? Uh, how would he like me to talk here? How would he like me to respond to this situation? What would Jesus do, in other words? Always everything that comes our way should be connected and related to in a manner that is pleasing to God, as God describes in his word. That's how we should meditate. That should be constantly the content of our thoughts, the words of God. And when we continuously speak the word of God, we can then continuously think the word of God as well, because the thoughts, content, are the words that we have. So when we put the words of God in our hearts, they're part of our thoughts, that's what we are going to meditate upon it. And what's the purpose of us meditating the Word of God? It says here, so that we will be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Maybe what you and I need to do if we are to prosper, if we read the Word of God, He will tell us that we need to forgive those who have offended us. Jesus says in His Word that unless we forgive those who have offended us, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us. So it's so important that you and I, from our hearts, forgive those who have offended us when we were maybe little or even adults. Somebody might have said something against us. Somebody might have done something against us. Forgiving them does not necessarily mean approving, actually does not mean approving of what they have done, but not holding grudge, not holding resentment, not holding bitterness within your own heart, which is really major cause of major sicknesses when we are bitter and angry in our hearts. God wants us to forgive from our heart. That might be the thing that God is talking to you that you need to do. And if you do that, God will help you to be prosperous and God will help you to be successful. Maybe what you need to do is not to commit adultery. Jesus said, if a man looks at another woman with a desire to have her, he has already committed adultery in his heart. You and I cannot expect to be blessed in our lives, to be successful, and to be adulterous. Just yesterday, I received an email from a Christian lady who has four children. I know both her and her husband. Both were Christians. She wrote to me that her husband is leaving her. He actually left, and he doesn't want to pay anything for the children. He doesn't want to take care of the house, nothing. She's devastated. Now. He doesn't want to say whether it is another woman or not. Regardless, I mean, God does not want us to go into a divorce situation. God hates divorce. So if we read the Word of God, and He tells us that we should love our wives, honor our husbands, build our relationship so it will be pleasing in the, God, in the sight of God, then that's what we should be doing. If we don't do that, then we cannot blame God if things don't work out in our favor, if we are not prosperous. I mean, when you divorce, you have to divide up the money. I've met so many people who have divorced and, and they're worse off financially and relationally and emotionally than they were before. Every relationship requires work. So pray, read in the Word of God and do what He says and bless your spouse. Build that relationship. God wants you to be successful, but He will not do the Word of God for you and me. You and I have to do it. And it says here, once we read the Word of God, once we speak the Word of God, once we meditate upon the Word of God and do it in our lives, then we are going to act with wisdom. It says, for then you will make your way prosperous. You know, some people think that God makes us prosperous. God does not make us prosperous. It says, you, we are going to make our way prosperous. Why? Because we are going to speak the Word. We're going to meditate upon the Word, and we're going to do the Word of God in our lives. We're going to act based on the Scriptures. And that will be wisdom which will bring us to prosperity and which will bring us to good success. So I want to urge you, do not let a day pass by without you reading, speaking, meditating, and acting upon the Word of God. Because that will be your formula for happiness and for success and prosperity in your life.